everybody welcome back to my channel beauty on a budget my name is Heather and my last video I kind of went over some of my way I use my calendars day planners agendas and why I have like so many that I use I, I'm a visual person so I I have to see things to know what's coming up having four kids cat's coming in the room trying to figure out why the door's opening I don't see anybody okay so I have four kids and just when there was a time when I had four kids in three different schools so I really needed to know what was happening in each school every day just even having four kids you know you know teachers friends things like that I just I found I really really had to keep myself organized and I found having everything written on one calendar Sorry, I was just about to sneeze. Uh, so sorry, I'm just trying to say yes. So having everything written on one calendar, my calendar was just filled with stuff. It looked so overwhelming. So I went to a, a couple calendar system. I have one calendar that I used to write just the kids' uh, school stuff in, and another calendar for um, appointments in. That's kind of where the multiple calendars kind of came from. And then the idea that. Uh, to have a calendar in my bedroom or the office part of the house, like this is my craft room slash office, and also have one in the kitchen or one in like the great room area, just so I can have a quick glance of what's going to happen today. Uh, having the calendar in my purse is just when I'm out and somebody calls and wants to do something, I can kind of plan and obviously I'll call you back. Uh, but today I really want to talk about, like, I want to get back into um, my meal planning stuff again. Like, we're New Year, I just want to get more organized, just trying to get organized in my whole house, just getting rid of lots of stuff, decluttering. But I really want to get back into meal planning, and so it's, uh, I've seen videos on how people do meal planning, and it's like, I don't have hours and hours to spend, um, Printing off recipes, categorizing things in binders and multi, like, color coordinating binders and duotangs or whatever they were using. I'm not that type of person. If it's, if it's in a book or a binder and the binder is put on a shelf, I'm never going to see it. That's why I have, like I said, I'm a visual person. Everything has to be out in the open where I can see what I've, what I've decided I'm going to try to do. So with my meal planning, the first thing, of course, is to know how many people are in your house, which, you know, I said I was at six, I've had two of my kids have moved out, so now we're down to uh, only four people living at home. And then, of course, like, you have to look at your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's like, well, how many breakfasts do you make? How many lunches do you have to make? And, of course, how many dinners do you have to make? Um, again, I've simplified it to the point where I don't even have to think about breakfast and lunch. Um, I keep my pantry and fridge, freezer well stocked with stuff. So breakfast, um, my kids all make their own meals. I typically, and my husband, we typically don't eat breakfast during the week. Uh, we kind of do more of like a brunch thing on the weekends or just when we're just kind of like off and not doing any work. So, so if I said for bus for breakfast, mostly it's some type of like an eggs, uh, cold cereal, oatmeal, um, breakfast sandwiches, breakfast burritos. I used to make those in big batches. So I'm going to have, so I'm going to do a, a couple things on my other channels, my big batch cooking coming up pretty soon. So breakfast is kind of like, you know, frozen waffles, like things that the kids can just make quickly, uh, you know, on their way out the door. Same with the lunches. My kids were in school, so when it came time to, for lunches, most of the time my kids are in school for lunch. So I, their lunches, they would take things like you know pizza or pizza pops, um, burritos, corn dogs, sandwiches, like whether they're like tuna and tuna or a meat and cheese or jams or something. Or, you know, sometimes they would even take, like, the leftovers from the nights before, like, the supper before. So they can have, like, hamburgers, hot dogs, sloppy joes, pierogies, onion rings, french fries, because they seem to have access to microwaves at school now. So that was, uh, when I was in school, yeah, there was, like, one microwave in the, oh, you know, in the lunchroom somewhere, but the whole school gets to use it. Well, now they got to where there's, like, almost a microwave in every classroom, so... It's kind of easier for the kids to take microwavable meals to school. 
So it's really just the dinners are the only ones that I actually have to plan out. So you say, I well, cut back on that. So you say, well, like there's about 30 days in the month. Um, dinners, I just, again, it's, I don't really do like a full big um, meal planning for like, oh, we're going to have this, this is our main and all the sides and the salads and everything like that. I do those type of meals when I'm doing like a big uh, function kind of thing, like a big holiday or something really important. Like, so it'll be Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, anniversary, Valentine's Day, the kid's birthday, my husband's birthday, things like that. Or when we invite people over for a dinner, then that's when I will actually do a big specific meal planning just for that particular dinner. But most of the time, you know, we're just, you know, just casual people. So like dinner would be just case, okay, some type of a may or may not conclude a meat dish, but you know, like something like a, you know, I don't like steak, but it's like, you know, steak, pork, a roast, um, any type of chicken, uh, fish. I love salmon. So we do a lot of salmon, burgers, uh, pierogies, french fries, onion rings, uh, whatever type of veggies I have, whether I'm using fresh or frozen. I find frozen works the best in my house. Uh, rice, pasta, the sauces, um, soups. Again, I find in my house frozen um, vegetables and frozen veg uh, frozen fruits actually work the best in my house. My kids make themselves a breakfast smoothie, so they grab um, the little the little ninja thing or magic bullet, whatever whatever one we have. I don't know. I've got a couple different ones. I always forget what the names are, but now I mix the names together, so it's either like the little ninja or or magic bullet or something, whatever the little one's called. And so they just throw in, you know, a handful of frozen fruit and some milk or juice or water. You don't even have to add ice because the fruit's already frozen. And so you just whip, you know, mix that up and that's their breakfast. You need to throw in, like, you know, like whatever you want to add to it. If you want some protein mix in there. So, so again, like, so making meal planning is quite easy if you simplify it. And it's like, it sounds like it's so hard to do. Again, it's just what does your family eat? It's not necessarily, oh, we've got to make up like a meal planning. No, shoot, I had it actually in front of me. Uh, one second and I'll be right back. Uh, sorry about that. I had papers here. I'm middle of getting my year-end books done, ready for my husband to send to the account to do our taxes. <laughs> And so these are actually from my day home and so I accidentally took them downstairs and when I came up my battery on my phone died so I had to charge my battery for a while. Okay so what I have is from meal planning and I said like uh, for my home like I said breakfast and lunch you know my kids do their own breakfast in the morning they make whatever they want they take their lunch to school so they prepare their lunch the only things I have to make are the dinners. Now it's a little different because I know some people really want like a meal plan who really want to make every breakfast, lunch, dinner, all the snacks. So I actually have created my meal plans for my day home. So I've got, okay, let's see the back of these. These were some, quite a few years ago, I think it's like Sobeys or an IGA, had these big nutritional calendar things for families to start doing meal planning. It's really like a, a month long thing and I ended up getting a couple of them. So I was able to make uh, five meal planning charts because they had these uh, meal plan inside them. So I've kind of changed mine. So I've got meal plans numbered one to five and I've got seven days down here. So you've got breakfast, lunch, dinner, and I've got an AM and a PM snack. And so no two meal combinations are the same. So I actually have 35 days worth of meal planning and how I use this chart for my day home is <clears throat> kind of like well what is on sale at the store what am I going to buy for this week for the day home kids how many kids do I have what are their ages and I mean that's another factor to consider when doing meal planning is uh, how much does each person in your home eat at a meal like I have like one son but you know he always ate two three times the amount of my girls like you know he's 16 so I mean he like after school snack for him, he'll grab two cans of tuna, two cans of chicken noodle soup, throw them in a pot, he'll put, mix a bunch of toast, and he'll still be ready for supper. 
and he'll eat like a big piece of steak and potatoes and everything else for supper. So, you know, like feeding my son is like feeding, you know, like three men sometimes. <laughs> but so you have to meal plan that way too. But this was for my day home. Now it was like I said, it's a little different because it's all little kids between the ages of one and five. And then I also use the, this is the Canadian food guide that I actually have used. Um, this one here I have is from 2007. I do have a newer updated one, uh, but I have it on my laptop. But I like to have, like even though this one's quite an older one, it is still really helpful. Like I have one that's even from 1998, where it was like the actual, like a pyramid one. Um, I've got different charts over the years. They've changed their mind on what's good for you, what's not good for you. Like I said, like a few years ago when they said don't eat avocados because they're full of fat. Uh, when they tell parents not to give their kids uh, dairy that contains full fat. It's like the kids need that. So you have to know what you need for food too. Not just following like these guidelines here. Because there's a couple things on here that I disagree with. Like when they say don't eat avocados but drink orange juice and apple juice. Well, I don't like the store-bought orange juice and apple juice. I just find, like, I look at them and I, I you know, when my kids were little, I actually bought the really expensive um, Heinz or Gerber Baby uh, apple juice. And then one day I was comparing, like, I'm paying, you know, like, so much. I think I was paying, like, $5 for, like, 500 mils of, or, like, maybe just under a liter of apple juice. Buying it in the baby food section, thinking that that's good for my kids. Then I went down just the regular juice aisle, and I saw the box of the store brand apple juice for a dollar a carton, which I was always told that that had too much sugar, that's not good for kids. And then I started comparing labels. And I realized that I'm paying like five times the amount for this expensive, I'm actually just paying for the brand in a nice glass bottle. And the dollar apple juice, or are they called apple drink, because there's not a lot of real nutrition in those. But I was looking at the sugar content. There was more sugar in the expensive baby product than the cheap product. So then I started kind of like, so I, already, so I started cutting out uh, the juice. I'm like, well, then what's the point of buying the juice if it's so much sugar in those? Then I've also looked in videos and like how they make orange juice. So I will not drink orange juice after watching some of those how they're made um, documentary shows. But I don't like the fact that they actually say juice, like, you know, like they do say 100% juice, but there is like, they always add sugar in. So I did find, um, <clears throat> so for juice, I find, might as well just give them like juice crystals. And then I always dilute it with double the amount of water. And then the kids actually drink more water and it's colored and flavored. <clears throat> and I trick the kids into thinking that they're getting something fun to drink. So there's a few things they said, like, even like, you know, when they're telling like, Parents, not to put their kids on like skim and 1% milk. Uh, I'm sorry, kids need the full fat for their brain functions to, you know, to develop properly. So there's things in different, you know, you just have to kind of read and see what there is. But I said my meal plan was like this one took me probably uh, two weeks to try to create because I had to think about this, okay, because I have to do, of course, every day I do lunch and I do a morning snack and an afternoon snack. But based on the hours for my day home, like I'm open so early and I can close so much later because uh, I'm private, um, I do find I've got kids who come like between 5 and 7 in the morning who I have to give breakfast. And then I've got the kids who come late in the afternoon, early you know, evening who I do have to feed them supper. So, so I have to meal plan for all that. So on a typical day, like I said, like for what I've got here, let's see, no, I'm just trying to, I'm on my glasses, I'm just trying to read my writing. So like a breakfast, if I give them like, um, so it has to be with through the whole day between their lunch, supper, uh, breakfast, and the two snacks, I have to see, okay, which meals are they here for? I have to give them like, everything has to have like every group from the, uh, food groups so that's where it kind of is um, a little bit interesting but I will say I've got this so if I give them for breakfast like scrambled eggs hash browns apple slices and milk 
Then for lunch, I've got buttered noodles, mixed veggies, peaches, and milk. And then supper, I've got sweet and sour meatballs, peas, mixed fruit, water, or milk. And then snacks, I have water, crackers, pineapple chunks, and then I got another one that's uh, dry cereal, grapes, and water. Now, part of this is, okay, so they have to have, like, while they're at my house, they have to have, uh, we've got it worked out, two, um, two servings of milk while they're at my house, just because of the number of milk products they need during a day. And so... So I find if I add the milk for the breakfast or the lunch or the lunch or the dinner and then give them the water for the snacks, it just kind of, you know, keeps things, you know, kind of a little bit easier. I always give them water throughout the day anyways. You know, you just do that. With, so all these kids come with their water bottles. They're all used to that. My kids weren't, my kids had to learn the water bottle when they got to school. But this is just a general, like, how to do a fast, easy meal planning, which doesn't take too much effort. I said, all you have to do is just... Think about each meal separately. So I said, for breakfast, okay, what do you make for breakfast? So, I mean, when I go to make my in my next videos, I'll be showing you, like, when I go to make my uh, grocery list, because I, um, for the week, what I think I'll need, I'll actually write down everything, and then I'll, uh, so I'll actually itemize, like, okay, so the breakfast items, what do I need? The lunch items, what do I need? The supper items, what do I need? Because in the lunch for my kids to take to school, I also include, like, their lunch snacks that they take. And it's going to be a mix of store-bought things and homemade things. So, like, the granola bars are really uh, handy to just buy a case of granola bars. And the kids can grab a couple out on the door, out on their way out to the door. They can have them for... Uh, quick breakfast or they can have them at lunch or eat them on their way home after school and But then I also like to make my own granola bars And then those ones they actually don't really take to school those ones. They actually just eat around the house I mean, I guess maybe they do, could take them to school, but they like the package ones for their school lunches So I say like so I said so breakfast is pretty easy breakfast is just the standard. Okay uh, scrambled eggs toast sausages bacon uh, cold cereals and the hot cereals and then I said for the lunches my kids take to school so we had do the pizza or pizza pops burritos corn dogs um, tuna sandwiches any other type of meat and cheese sandwiches but it's, I said, it's the dinners that are the harder ones because those are the ones that I actually have to make every night so those would be the seven ones that I act meals that I actually prepare uh, and of course I say like if I don't get to making supper, my husband will make supper, or my kids make supper too. But for the suppers, I said we do. Um, we're not a big meat family. Like I don't eat a lot of meat. I mean, I think I'm in the wrong province. I get where I am. I don't like steak. I love sushi and shimi, and sashimi, which is the you know raw fish without anything. So I'm definitely in the wrong province, being landlocked and cattle everywhere. But I do make a lot of fish, burgers, pierogies, french fries, chicken, uh, different types of beef, different types of pork, all the different types of uh, different veggies, fruits, um, rice, pasta dishes, and lots of soups, either whether they're the canned soups or they're the hearty soups that I make. Uh, a lot of vegetable soups or like uh, in stews like with the beef and pork. And chicken make either a stew or a soup it kind of depends on how thick it is and what you've added so that is kind of how I do my generalized meal planning so it's uh, pretty easy straightforward it it does take a uh, time to get used to that type of like thinking about uh, you know if you look at the counts like, oh I've got to make you know three meals a day for a month I mean it looks like so hard but if you just break it down say okay just think about breakfast then just think about lunch are you guys home to make lunch or do you take lunch to school and work what do you do for lunch do you buy your lunch at work or do you bring your pack of lunch uh, is your lunch um, you know like leftover supper because our kids do that a lot too depending on what we were making the night before and then it's just really this the dinners and again it's like do I feel like cooking seven big meals or do or do you prefer to be someone like me who I like to cook like a 
big supper that's gonna last like if I'm gonna make a casserole I'll cook like the ovens on I've got three racks in my oven I might as well make two or three casseroles so we can eat you know I can cook one now we could eat this one today and probably tomorrow and then I've got another two that are like either cooked or I could put them in the freezer before I cook them or I can cook them and then put them in the freezer it kind of just depends on what's in them for ingredients I prefer to cook them and then put them in the freezer or just in the fridge and then you know, you've kind of got meals for the rest of the week so I hope that helps everybody to understand like uh, meal planning doesn't have to be printing out recipes once a week printing out grocery lists once a week having color cording charts and binders it's just just simplify it I said like so my day home, this was the hardest one I've ever had to do. But I said this one was a little different. This way, uh, when I do interviews and parents can see, then they can see themselves what my what the kids are eating. But with this one, because I've got five different things with you know, like seven weeks, so I actually have a total of 35 weeks of meal planning. So I've got the meal planning number, you know, one to five, and then I got the numbers from like one to 35 and then I can say breakfast today will be meal plan number whichever and then the number whichever so I don't have to necessarily stick to this I can mix and match everything so it just gives a lot of options too if you're one of those type of people who I found this really works if you really want to sit down and just make a bunch of just ideas like what would you like to make for lunch or for dinners and snacks and stuff and one of my favorite snacks that I have written uh, quite a few times it says toddler trail mix now that's my homemade trail mix which again it's really easy to do and I of course I call it toddler because it's for my day home but basically it's just my homemade trail mix which is just um, any nuts and seeds that you want to add raisins cranberries blueberries you know uh, dried any any of the other dried fruits I guess like strawberries bananas um, I've even thrown in like the little baby Teddy Graham uh, little cookies uh, mini marshmallows chocolate chips coconut flakes other types of like dried cereal so the options to make your own trail mix are like really endless I've actually got some uh, ideas for um, so my trail mix that I make, I make some videos on my trail mix and my granola bars because they kind of go together. So that will be on my other channel. Like this one here is just this stuff. My other channel will just be all my crafting, cooking, and baking. So, <clears throat> sorry, just my allergies are just really acting up lately. <clears throat> Uh, when I need to get rid of them we haven't had any rain at all this past year, summer and spring so just uh, just very dry air not enough moisture <laughs> okay sorry <clears throat> so, oh I just say I hope that everybody understands that meal planning doesn't have to be hard I'll go into more detail when I'm actually writing everything out like I said probably the next day or two when I'm getting ready to do my grocery list how I create, uh, how I use making my grocery lists to create my meal planning, how the two really go together when doing weekly grocery trips. I don't do a lot of weekly trips. I kind of do, okay, I've got basic things that we, we do use a lot like milk and bread and the, a lot of the perishable items, but it's my pantry and my freezer. I will do like probably about the second or third week of the month. I do a big trip I haven't made one of those for a couple months but uh, we had a just had a lot of stuff the kids you know we got a lot of good deal a while back on really good meat so we filled our freezer with meat so we couldn't really buy anything else till the freezers now now the freezers kind of empty so now it's time to do the big trip again same with the pantry I had gotten really good deal on some cases of um, soups and veggies and stuff so the pantry was stocked full so I had to just you know wait till I've you know used up what was in the pantry before I do another big trip so I'm almost at that point so I will be doing that later this week doing my big um going through my fridge freezer pantry what items I need and I will be writing everything down I'll be explaining a little bit how to you know like use your grocery list to create your meal plan because everybody tries to make a meal plan and then try to do the grocery list I do it the other way. I said, no, let's make your grocery list. Like, what do you actually use in your house? Like, 
if there's a recipe you'd like to try, well, like, so there's a couple recipes I'd like to try. So I'll put those like on a Sunday. Like, oh, let's make a nice family dinner on a Sunday where we can make something interesting. Like there's this fish um, recipe I want to try. So I'll probably make it this Sunday coming up. Uh, hopefully <laughs> just got to get to the store and get a few things. I hope I can find the right type of fish for this recipe Again, that's kind of a tricky thing when you're landlocked. You're kind of Restricted into what kind of fish you can find But so again, just gonna say thank you to everybody who's watching and subscribing this channel uh, beauty on a budget and please watch and subscribe to my other channel that I've had for a little over a year now and that one is called made with love so I'll see you all in my next videos thank you and bye